So now, um, now 1987, so interesting year uh, for you and, and Diamond. So Diamond made around 19 million in sales, went national in 1988 with the purchase of the West Coast Bud Plants business, who had also acquired on the way there between 82 and 88 Pacific Distribution, as well as Nanette Rosansky's Alternate Realities distributors. And so basically with that buyout, um, uh, it, it looks like around that time he was interested in kind of selling because he sold comics and comics a year after that. Um, uh, basically with that buyout, you had control of about 40% of the direct market. Um, so how, how did that, did, did he just kind of, did you call him or did he call you? How did it's that a happen? great story. It's, I told you before, I always kind of had a good relationship with the, you know, competitors and friends, you know, where we would be comfortable. Yeah. This is a great story because, um, at the time, First Comics, Rick Obadiah, may he rest in peace, started First Comics. And Rick got was suing Marvel, and he was also suing World Color Press at Sparta, Illinois, for price discrimination. And they called me, Bud Plant, and Gary Colabono, a retailer in Chicago, another dear friend, in to court as witnesses for, for first comics. It was an awkward position because I didn't want to be an enemy of world color press or Marvel, mm. but I was, you know, in effect subpoenaed. I think it was actually a subpoena. Bottom line is I forget the guy's first name. His last name was Cherry. He was a hot shot attorney, you know, really mm. fast moving, aggressive. So I never forget. They put me on the stand. I was on the stand all day long, mm -hmm. throwing me the lawyers for world color press back and forth. And I'm just being honest. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end of the, and this sounds a little self-serving, but at the end of the day, Cherry came over to Gary, me, and Bud and said, Steve did such a good job today. I'm not going to need you guys. Hmm. So he sent, Gary couldn't go. He had to go home. He lived in Chicago. Me and Bud lived on you know, the coast. So he sent me and Bud to dinner at Nick's, Nick's Fish House, I think it was called, or Nick's Steakhouse uh -huh. in Chicago. I don't know if it's still there, but it was one of the greatest meals I ever had. Yeah. And so Cherry must have called the Mater D, and we were like kings. I think we didn't even see a menu for the first hour. We had <laughs> everything being brought to us like kings. That's but awesome. what was significant about that, because it was an hour before we even saw a menu, we had a three and a half hour dinner. Uh -huh. And it was during that dinner that I started to talk more seriously to Bud about the possibility of selling his company. You have to understand that up to that point, my distribution scope had been from the Midwest, call it Chicago, Sparta slash St. Louis, Dallas, yeah. East. He represents all new territory for me, the West. He had seven locations as a result of the acquisitions you meant. And keep in mind, when Bud used to advertise before he got into comics, his, his ad slogan was, but no comics. He would have art books and everything, but no comics. So yeah. Bud kind of went into this, and he'll tell you this, kicking and screaming. He never, I don't think, really wanted to be a comic book distributor like we define it today. So during that dinner, we formed the kind of the semi-handshake version of it. And before I knew it, we were signing a deal July 16th, 1988. We purchased Bud Plant Inc., who was the third largest distributor. Diamond was the second largest distributor. And by virtue of that uh, acquisition, we overnight became the largest distributor, hence the world's largest distributor of English language comics, which gave us, as you mentioned, collectively about a 44% market share overall. Mm -hmm. And that purchase you mentioned we did 19 million dollars in 1987 which i think is an accurate number and we it was overnight on paper much let alone reality yeah. a 60 percent increase in our size which is a big thing for any company to take a company and have 60 percent growth overnight and it actually ended up being more because the industry was growing but we swallowed it and those seven warehouses never forget chuck parker went with me we flew to seven cities in seven days, we met with all the employees at each location. We called in every retailer at every location. Wow. And I never was so worn out from meetings in my life. But in yeah. seven days, we managed to make our pitch and we got the opportunity. And as I say, the, you know, the rest is history.